teach a lot of people how to tune their Holly EFI systems, and one of the questions I must get asked at least 25 times a week is, do I need to retune my fuel table if I swap fuel injectors, and I have injector data for both sets of injectors? I just had a truck come into the shop with this exact scenario, so in this video, we're gonna drive it around on the street, and then we're gonna put it on the dyno, and we're gonna see how much tuning, if any, is required after switching from one set of injectors to a different set of injectors, and we have injector data for both sets. So far, uh, just to pull it out of the shop and uh, park it right here uh, so we can play musical cars because uh, we we're supposed to put this on the dyno today. But unfortunately the connector for the can cable is mounted under the seat and under the carpet and the carpet's glued down so it can't actually plug a cable into it. Uh, so I'm going to play musical cars, pull this one back inside. Uh, they're going to come by and rip it apart so that we can get to the connector. And uh, while that's all going down, we're going to put this on the dyno. Uh, this one's a good friend of mine's car. I think I'm actually going to do this one backwards. Uh, and since, again, it's already been tuned on the old injectors, I think I'm going to drive it around a little bit and try and get it a little bit close before we put it on the dyno. Uh, the weather's a little bit questionable and I don't uh, want to set this all up and have it rain five minutes later. So in theory, on paper, if you have the correct data for both sets of injectors, there should be very little uh, adjustments kind of needed, uh, but 99 out of 100 times it seems that's rarely the case. So uh, up to this point, we, like I said, we've pulled 20% of fuel out of it just to get it to idle right. So uh, curious to see if that's going to be a global 20% change kind of everywhere or if we're going to be reshaping the fuel curve altogether. So let's see what happens. So I just sat here and shaped the fuel table based off of what I thought it was going to do uh, based off of uh, the changes I had to make it idle. And then I realized that that kind of defeated the purpose of showing you just untouched uh, how this is going to uh, kind of work out with the new injectors. So what I did instead is uh, uploaded the, the previous file untouched with the exception of the, just I highlighted a chunk at idle, took 20% out uh, just because I don't want to foul a set of plugs or something like that. Uh, so other than that, this kind of untouched and uh, turned the learn table on, uh, which was off previously. So I'm just going to drive it around and then we're going to take a look at the learn table. And just so nobody gets their hopes up, um, this is just going to be cruising. This isn't going to be like ripping ass up and down the road or whatever. I don't usually use the learn table like this for tuning. I just figured that this was the easiest way to be able to show you guys the changes required from swapping the injectors. Uh, it's running good, so that's a good sign. Uh, coolant temp's about 140. Uh, so closed loop learn, all that stuff's not going to work for a little bit. And uh, all right, let's go for a drive. This thing doesn't have a hood on it, so hopefully I don't get arrested or something stupid. And he specifically said after driving it last time that all the transmission stuff is good and he's happy with that, so we don't need to do any tweaking with that. Which I disagree, it shifts too quick out of first gear, so we'll change that. Pressure-wise, feels good. All right, I'm just gonna cruise for a bit. Sort of funny with the converter and this thing, it basically just stays in like one cell the whole time. Uh, there's always speed traps right here, so I gotta get out to a little bit more open road. And our kind of guess at 20%, uh, down low was pretty accurate, but we need to hit some more cells. Uh, for what it's worth, it drives absolutely amazing. You wouldn't know uh, that it has new injectors in it or anything like that, so that's a good sign. I guess worth mentioning, we essentially went from thousands to one thousands. Uh, so usually when you are similar in size, it's very close. But if you go from like 80 pound to 220 pound or whatever, usually it requires a lot more tweaking. Um, 
damn thing disconnected from the ECU. Mad if I flip your truck, I'm sorry. There we go. So past idle, it looks like it's trying to pull about 15%. So realistically, it looks like everything at lower manifold pressure, we probably just could have pulled an even 20% and been really close, which is what I started to do. This thing actually drives awesome. The one two shifts a little early for my liking, but that's all a personal preference thing. As I was driving around, I figured we'd come here and look at some ducks and shit. There's some lake over here, but somehow the whole park is closed. So this is essentially only changing injector data and uh, driving it. Uh, and this is probably, I don't know, 45 minutes of driving. So I said I took 20% out in this big chunk. Uh, so this confirms I was pretty close. Uh, looks like everything else. Uh, so this is where the learn table can be misleading because uh, it looks like it's just tapering out, but that's just the smoothing that it's trying to do. Uh, and then it looks like it's going to want to add some fuel uh, once we start uh, going up in boost. So I'm probably going to uh, definitely not transfer learn to base because that will break everything. Uh, but we'll probably do something like take a big chunk of fuel out here and then probably add a bunch of fuel like this and then uh, sort of blend in between. Uh, usually this cruising crap is is relatively easy uh, the full throttle stuff in my opinion is the easiest uh, but this like transitional stuff uh, can sometimes uh, be pretty finicky especially if like you're in that situation where it wants to remove a bunch of fuel down low and then it wants to add a bunch of fuel up top uh, sometimes it can be tricky to make a decent looking fuel curve It's got a sloppy stage something in it. I don't remember. All right, here's a rough stab at a fuel curve based off of what the learn table is showing. And here, uh, this is the transition I'm talking about that's probably uh, going to require a little tweaking, but we'll see. Uh, so now I'll drive it back. Uh, I'll be back to the shop in a few minutes. And it turns out I made the wrong decision because I could have done all this in three minutes on the dyno. But uh, it's nice to be able to tweak some of this transmission stuff. So. Basically just shit, raised up the 1-2 and the 2-3 shift points and uh, tweaked a little bit of the converter lock and I went up a hill and you could tell that uh, the converter was kind of uh, having a tough time deciding what I wanted to do. So made some tweaks there. So, all right, yeah, we still got time. So we're gonna take this back to the shop, put it on the dyno now. All right, here's the learn after the drive back. We're pretty much right on the money here. Uh, this is real close other than these oddball sort of stupid cells. And uh, it looks like we pulled a little bit too much out here, but these numbers here are just where the converter's like flashing. This isn't even uh, real. So like if you drive here, not when the engine's just like revving up, uh, everything comes back down to like two or three. What I was trying to say here wasn't very clear. The learn table had values of two or three in it during normal driving. And just right before I pulled into the parking lot, I accelerated a little bit, the converter flared up a little bit, and it just wrecked the learn table with all these big numbers that you see. Lowering the gain on the learn table can help a little bit. Again, for this example, I just used a gain of 100 to get the fastest response. But either way, I'd still much rather make adjustments using data logs or real time instead of using all of this learn stuff. I, there's no way I could tune on a regular basis using the learn table. It makes everything so much harder because uh, you're kind of just guessing. So this is a really good example of why I don't do this. So we're gonna set up on the dyno now. We'll kind of touch up, verify all this. And I went a little too high on my shift uh, shit. So I went up, I forget what I went up. I think I went up like eight miles an hour. I think I'm gonna chop that in half. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump the idle screw up a little bit. Um, all of our idle numbers and everything are great in park, uh, but they're a little high in drive. For not having a muffler at all, this thing is pretty tame and reasonable, but at the same time, if I was gonna drive it on a regular basis, I would want a muffler, but 
Uh, just like everybody else's project car, this thing gets driven once every six months, so I'm sure it's just fine. Well, they stopped by, we got the cable situation squared away on that. The seats had to come out, had to go under the car and dig through stuff. So that uh, definitely, when you put those things in, make sure that you can access everything because that uh, was a gigantic setback. But we're all set up with this on the dyno. And uh, this, again, this is a good friend of mine's car. So it's kind of funny how uh, this started off, it was dropped off, like just tuning on spring on 93. I don't really care. I just want to drive it. And then like literally the next day it was like, Hey, can I bring by some E85 and some CO2 and some plugs and uh, all that good stuff. But, uh, considering we only changed injectors, probably just going to do uh, fuel changes if needed. And his boost solenoids didn't work last time. So apparently he's got that squared away. So we'll, mostly be tuning the boost controller and figuring out what our you know dome pressure needs to be to make whatever power we want but it made like 830 last time and uh, that's more than enough uh, so we're not really shooting for a number here we're just trying to make sure kind of just basically trying to get everything back to the way that it was before so just going off the trends of what it looked like the ECU was trying to do as far as the learn table goes uh, this has 10 percent of fuel added to it basically everywhere in boost and uh, other than that it's untouched so I'm just gonna make a run on gate which he changed springs, so I think this has got like 10 pound springs in it now, something like that. Uh, so we'll make a run. I'm going to turn the learn table off, and then we'll just look at a day log to see how close or how far the tuning changes needed to be uh, for these new injectors. Throttle's sticky on this thing. but I let out of it early because it was adding a ton of fuel which is kind of interesting because we had to remove like 20% down low I added 10 already and it looked like it was adding close to 20 so let me get this all set up and we'll take a look at the log all right so if we look at this our voltage is good uh, oil pressure fuel pressure everything looks okay so you got a truckload of closed loop comp uh, this is before we even like really roll into it but uh, if you look we got 42 pounds of fuel pressure and uh, out here we're only making seven pounds of boost uh, but our fuel pressure has gone up 10 pounds so not uh, not the end of the world but uh, it's not exactly perfectly one to one I'm just gonna everything for and above I'm just gonna add 20 and you can see as we go up into the 30s on boost or whatever like our VE table numbers are still the same like these will start to roll over uh, we've just never gotten to the point with this where it has rolled over yet so i don't like to start taking that fuel out assuming that it's going to roll over until it actually does uh, so that's why that's like that i already added a little bit of fuel down low so at this point i'm just trying to rough this in so it looks like about here on that how jacked up does this look actually it looks pretty good so we'll just save this and let's try it again He likes to fight you. We'll shoot that into the ECU. So long story short, I would say at this point, considering down low we've had to remove a ton of fuel, up top we've had to add a bunch of fuel, and then obviously we have to blend in between there. As of this point, we haven't had to like reshape the curve of the fueling, but every other aspect of the fuel table has needed to be adjusted. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Uh, obviously we know the injector dynamics data is great. Uh, the snake eater provided data with their injectors um, and I'd say I don't know we're kind of out in left field uh, between the two different sets uh, so I always tell people if you change injectors just expect that you're probably going to need to change it sometimes it's not quite as far off as this but uh, this one is not uh, not ideal we've had to make some huge swings on this let's try this again
in that blend zone. And what I saw in the real-time data looked like we were much, much closer. We'll take a look at this real quick. Guess it made 5:30. Apparently, I can't read. All right, I haven't looked at this yet. So uh, let's see. Before we were kind of out in left field, starting the run. Now we're pretty, pretty darn close. As we ramp up, everything looks good. So right about here, uh, you can see we had dipped down just a little bit. So about 4,508 pounds we'll, can take a touch out. Past that we're at like two or 3%. So ultimately for taking two stabs at this, uh, again, I didn't really shape the, change the shape of the dyno curve, uh, just plus or minus almost like kind of everything in boost uh, and change that transitional area just a little bit but so do what you want with this information in terms of making your own judgment if you think that you need to entirely retune for a new set of injectors or not um, I would say that this is pretty close to needing a retune like I wouldn't have wanted to drive this uh, without making these adjustments uh, but it's definitely significantly easier and less work than starting like completely from scratch um, having the actual shape of that fuel curve really does save a ton of time. And then as far as startup, idle, like, uh, you know, all of all of that stuff, um, I did tweak uh, the warm-up enrichments. I think I pulled probably like 5 or 6% out there. Uh, but now that I've made all these changes to the fuel table, um, I'll let it sit overnight, and then we'll verify that all of that stuff is still good after, after making those tweaks. But at this point, like I said, this spot here, is a little bit just a touch off it's it's not gonna kill anybody like that so i'll make a couple little small tweaks and then i'm gonna start turning the boost up 